So using the same values that we used in the previous question with these pool balls that were obviously very massive pool balls, 1.55 kilogram pool balls, and the values that we came up with in terms of the velocities after the collision versus before the collision. Let's see if energy was conserved. Um, let's do it as a column, a check column. You know in math class they do a proof? So we could do a left si side, right side. Let's check to see if the energy before and the energy after is the same. That's a nice method. So EK versus EK primed. So EK, and I'm just going to use numbers again. I'm going to drop the units because I do have some limited space here, although it's certainly more correct to include the units. Um, 1 half times 1.55 times, so 1 half mv squared. VA is 2.35 squared. That's all the kinetic energy before the scenario, for the before scenario. And then in the after scenario, we have 1 half times 1.55 times for mass A, 1.28 squared, plus the kinetic energy for mass B, which is 1 half times the mass, 1.55. Kinetic energy is just a scalar, no direction required. There's no such thing as, as uh, kinetic energy up or something like that. So what do we get for our total kinetic energy on the left hand side? 4.2799 joules. What did we get for a total kinetic energy on the right hand side or the a in the after scenario? Did not get that. Didn't get 4.2799? Uh oh. I did. Somebody else did. Okay. What do we get on the in the after scenario? Oh, it's three. Five joules. Anybody else want to second that motion? 3.25 and that's it? 3.25376. 3.25376 joules. All right. Yeah, now, was energy conserved? Mm -hmm. If energy wasn't conserved, is this, is this an elastic collision or an inelastic collision? Um, wouldn't it be partial because they're not sticking together? Well, they're not sticking together. You're right. So they're, they're not sticking together, but it's not perfectly elastic. So we, we, would, we would tend to say that it's inelastic. Okay? So an inelastic collision, and we could even figure out how much energy was lost. How could I figure out how much energy was lost? Yeah. So I could say E lost is EK minus EK primed, and we could certainly do that, but we're running out of time. And could I figure out the energy efficiency here? Yeah, I could say EK prime divided by EK. So EK final divided by the energy that it started with times 100%. There's a few different ways that I could analyze this. I could talk about how much energy is lost. I could talk about how much, what percentage of energy I still have remaining. But either one, nice valid ways to talk about elasticity.